Hey everybody, welcome to another question and answer, another solo act. Um, Jimmy, we've been giving Jimmy a little bit of a break after that wing chair class, which was very extensive, and he was in here. Jimmy was here every time we needed him. Jimmy's a, such a good sport. He's here when we need him for the filming. He's never he's never been late. He's never said no. He's always been here. So we we want to shout out to Jimmy if he's if he's watching uh, and want to say thank you and also update you on that class. That's a a, a uh, wing chair class, Patrick. Yep. A wing chair class that's going to be coming up very soon uh, in the spring, right? Patrick. Sorry, in the, listen, listen. Uh, yeah. In the spring. spring. <laughs> so I'm making sure your audio is working. All right. You know, big last week we just started off muted. Okay? Yeah. So we're we're, <laughs> we're really uh, hoping uh, for a good response to that class because people have been asking for that forever, and we're we're very. We're, I think we're happy more or less with the classes that we sell online, Patrick. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, we know that we're in a narrow. Um, you know, we're not offering uh, classes in uh, you know na painting class or whatever. We know that it's kind of a narrow uh, subject matter. And I think that we're happy with what we've done. I mean, we've worked hard. I mean, you guys don't know the half of it. I mean, between, I, I mentioned this, and I don't want to sound like a complainer, but I'm not complaining. It's, it's good work. Um, the, the filming that you see is hours of editing behind it, as you know, between uh, Patrick and Michaela. And I don't know how they do it, because I couldn't do that job. Uh, you have to stay at task for long hours in front of that computer, and that's a hard thing to do, but they do it well. And I think Patrick does a terrific job on the filming, and Michaela, the filming and the editing of those shows. I think they're going to go on. You know, I think those shows are going to be on YouTube forever, Patrick. I really still do. a lot we haven't done. Like, we haven't even done a Tufted project. Or I know. Like, yeah. We still need to do things. But, you know, between the YouTube videos, which you guys are watching on YouTube, if the first time, welcome. Please subscribe. Everybody tells you that when you look... And they tell me when I go on, I look at particular, I was watching a guy on YouTube. I'd like to talk about other channels not related to upholstery. I don't like talking about the upholstery, other upholstery programs, but I do like, I saw one, Patrick, I meant to tell you, it was a There's young, so much upholstery you talk about. a young man uh, goes around, he's a professional barber, really good too. And he goes around giving people free haircuts. I don't know if you've seen him, he's a young man. Um, he goes around, he just approaches people, sometimes they're, they're not in the best moods uh, when he goes up to them, but he gives them a haircut. He's really awesome, Patrick, the way he gives haircuts. Oh, that's cool. And he gave some. He gives awesome haircuts, and it's funny how people, when they say yes, they start to open up to him. They start young people, other young people, he goes up to, and they start opening up about their life and about what they're doing. They're going to school, what they hope to, what they hope to accomplish, and all these things. And they, it's an awesome. I can't remember the channel. I'm sorry, but you guys just Google. Uh, free haircuts and this guy will come up. He's got like a million views on each one of these, which is fantastic. I like it. I like this creativity that YouTube, YouTube has opened up so many worlds for people. Um, you know, we, we started, I, I, it's worth mentioning, we started this as kind of a joke, right Patrick? Kind of like Patrick had a, a camera and he was interested in videography and I always supported him from a very young age. Believe it or not, Patrick was eight years old when he got his first camcorder. And he, he just, I don't know how he knew how to work this thing without even reading. I mean, it came with instructional book. It's this big. Patrick picked up the camcorder and a skateboard. And he would film himself skateboarding. <laughs> right? Do you remember that, Patrick? That was a good time, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't know. So he combined both um, skateboarding and, and videography. Well, you, didn't get, you didn't start skateboarding in the upholstery shop yet. No. How you do that? I don't think, no. You know how it is with me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even stand up on it. <laughs> I don't know how these kids do it, but anyhow. Oh, well, speaking of that, yeah. you got the ribbon chair behind you. They were going to show people what it looks like. Well, right now. <laughs> well, the ribbon chair is not is not going anywhere. No, it hasn't really changed. You know, yeah. these oh, it's still kind of in a uh, well. That period, people yeah. are wondering about that because that was the last video we posted on YouTube, right, Patrick? Yeah, the ribbon you chair. You took the fabric off. It's really an unusual chair, and it's an it's probably the most unusual seating that I've ever seen. And I think I mentioned it. You guys check out the video. You know what's weird? It's ac it actually is comfortable. I thought it was going to be... Well, I Patrick, it wasn't bad, to be I'm honest. telling you, I think the design is unbelievable. I think it's an un unbelievable design. It takes away the... Well, I, I can't get into it because I'm a little embarrassed to talk about it, but it is a really good design. If you check out the video, the first video, and you'll see... 
there's a reason for that. It, 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 it's the most uh, anatomically suitable chair that I've ever seen. <laughs> You'll know what I mean if you look at the video. I'm not, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but it works, and it, it's funny how it works. Looking at this chair, you would say it's, it wouldn't be comfortable at all, but it is. It was, it was really well done. So I do want to get to... Um, I'm really excited. If you see that I'm a little in my voice and I'm a little tired, it's because I am. I just, I guess, came from Arlington, which is our other shop. This here, we're in, in Maine and in our studios here. But in Arlington, I just taught two classes, and they were wonderful classes. I, I have wonderful people in the classes who are all, all seem to be professionals, and some are retired, some are still working. But I had two classes today, so uh, I'm coming from the second class. And this is about, for all you guys who don't know, Maine is about, how far would you say, 15 miles away, Patrick, or 20? Uh, uh, 20 miles? Something. 20. 20 miles away, I think. So with traffic sometimes, I just get here, so I'm just sitting down and I'm talking to you. But I'm glad you joined me. Um, is there any questions or comments yet, Patrick? No, we got uh, few people here checking in. Okay, great. Um, I know we had a ton of activity on the forum. So yeah, and we're going to get to that. Do you have the, You, I think it was too soon. We just got some of that stuff. Do you have some pictures for me up there, Patrick, or no? no I have, I, you have them over here, here. okay. Yeah. So I want to get to some of the projects that people are bringing into the class, and it's kind of interesting. I see many varied projects, so I really have to be on the ball. Uh, well, I might oh, as well talk about it now. Um, How's that work in a wicker chair? Well, the wicker chair, you guys, I have a, a, a woman who brought in a wicker chair, and she has a drop-in. She's the one with the drop-in unit on the wicker chair. So drop-in units are kind of interesting because they're self-contained seating is what it is. So everything's done off the piece of furniture. It's like a slip seat, only a drop-in seat has springs, and it's, it's elevated, and you have to be really careful not to put too much padding on the sides. And just, so this is a challenging project in itself. And so my customers, some of them, you know, my students, they're nice people, but they can be a little, um, you know, precise in what they want. In this case, she wants all natural. Uh, she does not want uh, a, a foam. So we have to place it. She's okay with Daycron, but she doesn't want foam. So I, I had to find a really thick Daycron pad for her to put over the unit. But first we put, we put uh, and then we put muslin over that. But it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit involved, and she's going to, sew it so that's good she sews itself some of the people who take the class are very talented if they're not talented in upholstery or stitching they have crossover skills very rarely does somebody take the class although they do um, and they they don't have any skills and some people don't but that's fine I can work with any skill level in the class so these classes are not beginners classes they're not intermediate and they're not advanced they're for everybody, which is kind of nice. And the, the thing about that, like the Facebook forum, which I'll get to in a minute, people like to talk to each other in the class and they support one another. And it's a, you know, if you're gonna be doing these classes, I encourage you guys, Malcolm, uh, Randy, Diana, all you guys out there, uh, Janine has, has mentioned, she's gonna wanna do classes. I really encourage you to do classes. It, it's gonna up your, your skill level. I'm a better upholsterer because I teach classes, believe me because I'm teaching people and I'm thinking more of the process and I'm seeing more varied projects. Like this one I want to talk about, this wicker chair. And we got a lot to talk about on the Facebook, so I don't want to take, take too much time, but this is a little different. So this, this wicker chair, it's an old wicker chair. And pardon my, uh, Michaela probably could do a much better job at me, but it's got like a wicker, like a heavy wicker border here. And then it's got like, the wicker in the back, all this is wicker, let's say. And then it has the drop in. Michaela's probably laughing at my illustration. It's like a tombstone. <laughs> Do you like my illustration? <laughs> it looks like a tombstone, Patrick said. The drop in unit goes in here, right? But what I wanna what I wanna talk about is the back more, right? So the back she, she was asking me today, she said the back had a crescent moon shape cushion like this. Oh hold on a second. I need to erase this that I put. And now, now I have to put a cushion in front of the wicker, okay? And the wicker shows just on the bottom part. What's cool about it is, so she has a crescent-shaped cushion that goes like this on there. She was wondering how, how that was attached. And I says, well, it's invisible. The, what you do is, and, and you guys have seen my videos about the, the slip knot, okay? 
and the right thread, it's, it's the hand stitching thread, that you, you make your cushion separately, you fill it, you close it up, and then you put it on. You can't put too much filling because this is curved. So I knew exactly how to do it, and I was telling her about it, too. I said, you're going to have, we'll have fun with this because you attach it from the back, which she did. She thought that the strings were attached to the back of the fabric of the cushion. But no, if you have a curved needle and you have the right thread and you have the knowledge of the, of the, of the, um, the, the, the knot, the slip knot, everything's done from the back with the curved needle and, and you use a thread, I use a beige thread, uh, th hand sewing thread. It has to be a nylon, it has to be a really good thread, you can't use cotton. It has to be the hand stitching thread, not the, not the, not the uh, tufting twine. Nothing like that. And then if, if you're clever enough, you put them you, you, from the back side, you, you, put, you, you pick the, the best piece of wicker to attach it to, do your slip knot, cut the knot back, and you can't see the stitching from the back if you do it right. So it's kind of cool. So she's got that project. And then another, another woman who has a small channel back chair that, that we're going to have to do, which is, and she, this, this client, or this student, decided she didn't want the channel back, she wants to go to a straight back, which we can accommodate that, can do that. So this, we talked about the drop-in unit. And they have three people at wing chairs, you guys. That's, as you guys know, you'll be, seeing, you'll be seeing soon the wing chair that Jimmy's done. So these are full-size wing chairs, and I tell people when they take the class, I usually consult with them. This is an eight-week class, two hours each time, so it's 16 hours, okay? So 16 hours is not near enough time to complete even one wing chair. And so um, definitely I tell them you're going to need two classes, two classes, right? And we charge $500 a class. So that's one equals $1,000 for a wing chair, right? I charge $1,200 for a wing chair. They could still realize the savings and they get to say that they did it themselves. But this is just the goes to show you how long it takes to do a wing chair. And I have a, a, a very industrious uh, student who has two wing chairs that she's doing. She knows up front, but a lot of people take the class for socializing and, and they want to learn and they want to say that they, they did their job. My sister took a class and She's been posting all over Facebook. Have you seen those postings, Patrick? Yeah, it was really good. Chair. She's very proud of the fact that she did it in class. So she's 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 been a good supporter of my sister. So I say thank you to her. But this is so. So this is uh, just a few of the projects. I have what 10, 10 students, Patrick. Well, so between all, all three days. All the days. Yeah. Well, we I have. Think it's more than ten. We yeah. have four, Patrick. Four four classes that we're teaching. Crazy. Case you're so um, really busy. Um, but as, as luck would have it, we've been slowed down a little bit on the custom work. And Michaela, and, and a little later, we can talk about some of the, we have some uh, estimates that came in, but we're a little slow in that department. So having the class has kept me busy and, and the shop busy. So we have the inline classes, we have the online classes, we have the Facebook forum, we have uh, the YouTube, right, Patrick? We have our custom shop. So we're busy, um, and we keep ourselves busy. I think in this business, this industry, uh, because you have the uh, ups and downs, ups and downs, uh, that looks like the ribbon chair pattern. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's important to keep yourself engaged. And, and all of these people that are coming to me now, Patrick, I don't know if you realize it, but they're asking me, um, I have other furniture that I want you to do. So this is what I want a shout out to Malcolm and everybody else out there that's been following me. Now, I don't think there's one person that's taken that leap. Janine's close, she said. And of course, COVID got in the way, but there's not one person who's taken the leap to teaching. And I think that they would not, I, I don't think they should hesitate. I, I'm talking about people who are a little bit more advanced that have their own shops. Really, it's a way to draw people in. You create a buzz. Uh, usually you get some attention because you, we have a sign. Patrick Smart, this guy, I'm telling you, Patrick and Michaela, they, they should be working <laughs> in a five-star hotel or somewhere in their marketing department because they really do a good job. So we have a sandwich board sign that we put out while the classes are going only. And we have the online classes are active and at nighttime we have the lights. So it, and I see people... It really is like Broadway. Yeah, I see people <laughs> looking in and they're all curious. It looks like, you know what, it almost looks like a, a scene out of a, one of those uh, things you, you shake up with the snow, the snow globes. Snow globe. 
Uh, it, it's like it's like looking into a or or like then they see Jimmy under the spotlight. They all run away. <laughs> <laughs> we keep Jimmy in the back. <laughs> but it looks like it looks like activity. It looks like a buzz. It's it is a buzz. It is a buzz. And this is what you could create for your own shop. I mean, you guys who are renting sh uh, businesses, I, you know, at first I was hesitant to start in the classes again. Patrick can tell you, but I. I'm really happy that we did it, Patrick. I'm really having a good time. We've got some really quality people. But it does, hey, you're, you're paying square footage and, and you leave the shop at night, if you've got the energy and, you, and you've got the time, why not you take advantage of the shop? I, and I'm shouting out to Blair, too. Blair, is uh, he's, he's got a good shop there. He's got a busy shop. He's got a big shop. He's got a lot of square footage. He definitely could. And But he, he's a young guy. I bet he's got a little bit of, you know, he, he may be a little hesitant on teaching classes, Patrick. He may not be confident in his skill level, but I would say if he can upholster furniture, he could do it. I don't think the refinishing is a, is a great way of going, but the upholstery, definitely. And, and he could see our um, online class. He's taken the online class. He's seen that more than the YouTube, guys. You'll see the technique that I use with teaching Jimmy or Michelle or anybody else. It's the pin tack. It's the pin tack, and Michaela's going to be doing it. It's the pin tack and the keys that they teach in class. You can't teach a class uh, of six people. And by the way, I'm keeping it at six people. Oh, well, you have to. I can't. There's no possible. We way had to. twelve. I did twelve by myself, Patrick. But you can't well, you teach. You did twelve the current by myself. Layout? No, years ago. Oh, I that's what I'm saying. I'm about space. No, with the current one. layout, forget it. I had more space. But um, the point is, you can't teach a class with six hoses and six staple guns going at the same time. No way, you can't do that <laughs> to show people how to pick. I already have a headache. Just slows people down. Are there any comments or questions yet, Patrick? Uh, oh, it's Malcolm. Just uh, a lot of people are checking in. Yeah. So um, we're, we're just talking about he's classes. Just I thought that about this year. I'm starting up a product business and then I'm wrapping up with that project. Malcolm. Yeah. So it sounds like yeah. He, Kind of Malcolm sounds simple. like, from what I've seen his, in his writing and, and his descriptions and his uh, um, good attitude, that I think he would make a good teacher. Not knowing him personally, but I bet he would. I bet all of us, all of our people that follow us, I think, would be great teachers. You know, and there's no better feeling uh, when somebody says that to you and when they say that, you know, we've had people come up to us after the class. These are adult ed classes. These are extra extra things that people do in their life and they come up to us and tell us what a difference we made in in having an outlet like this and i've uh, talked about this before but with covid it knocked out all these adult ed programs all this extracurriculum things for adults people with kids you know kids are stressful uh, people need their their outlets people need their their time away and you know that's why the way i teach um, you know, I don't teach the way I was taught in my, my programs when I, when I was starting. It was like you were greeted at the door and you were saying, well, okay, stupid, what are you going to screw up today? <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, brother, they weren't really good, sensitive teachers. <laughs> now, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to crack the whip like that. Nobody would come to us. You know, part of it is it's a concierge uh, teaching, right, Patrick? It's concierge. It's 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 uh, just being a good human being, and I think most of the people that I've engaged with with social media on our Facebook, especially from what I've seen, is a bunch of helpful people, and I think any one of them could teach. And trust me, if you teach, you're going to get business. Not that that you do it for that reason, for the sole reason. I think also from a community standpoint, I wanted to take some time, Patrick, to talk about this. Patrick might be surprised, but I'm going on a little bit. But I, I told Blair, Blair visited me from Alabama, he came up and I, I said, I said, what you have to remember too is that you could be the only shining light in the whole community by being there. Um, we were on Broadway and Arlington, I was the only light on in that, a lot commercial light on in that property, even though we weren't open, we couldn't open. We had a light on and we showed activity, we showed that we were there, we cared about the community. The community would respond to you. It might not be an overnight thing. It would be a slow thing sometimes, especially if you're just starting out. But uh, teaching adult ed classes has, has expanded our community. I don't feel as though we have to do anything else uh, civically minded. Uh, we do the classes, and that's enough. And, uh, and we do make a difference on that level. I don't care if people do a lousy job. I try to encourage every work level, like I said. But you should, guys should try. You should get excited about it. It, it really is an exciting thing. 
to be able to do it and using your skill that you've learned on our station, on our YouTube, on our online classes and, and, and these uh, question and answers. So to go for it. I really encourage you. I'm waiting for somebody, Patrick, one of our long time, uh, one of our people following us to, to do this. Um, even if they just do a two or three person class, just start small. They won't regret it. They'll, they'll love it. I'm waiting for it. Right, Pat? We'll see. Maybe it'll be Jimmy or something. Be cool. Jimmy would be great. I mean, Jimmy would be nice at it. I mean, I, I, I think, though, that you need to be good with your staple gun. You need to you need to have some good knowledge behind you. And I think that the key, too, is... He definitely has the personality. He does. He has a good <laughs> personality. All right, so I think that's it. Unless there's any questions or comments, <coughs> Patrick. I'm going to move on to the YouTube. Uh, so uh, the YouTube, we're going to get going on the 18th century. We don't have, we only have three YouTube comments, and I think it has a lot to do with our lack of uh, videos as of late. So we're going to have to uh, up our game there. And I was talking to Patrick uh, just a minute ago about content. I mean, we could have, if it worked, it doesn't work though very well. Um, if we had a camera in the class and it worked, we could find a way to make it work and found three or four people who were willing to be on camera. A lot of people, That's you know, a lot of people don't like being on camera. So nobody we, wants to see a video, a bunch of blurred faces, you know, what I mean? yeah. it takes away from the whole thing. But some of these classes though, are full of content that you've never seen. Really, the, like that half, that, that crescent moon cushion on an old wicker chair, and the how to f how to make it, how to fill it, how to close it up, and then how to attach it onto the wicker back. That's something that you don't see. But in the classes, that's what I'm telling you, we get so many varied projects, more so than in our custom work area. So this is another reason why you guys out there like uh, Esquire upholstery, uh, I really would advise you to do that because you're going to see more. It's going to up your skill. You're going to see more, and I'm going to get to something that they did, which I'm very impressed with. A project that they did recently, Patrick, out at Esquire, out in Wisconsin. Um, they did a project that is that I would even probably struggle uh, with. I printed it out, I think. Right? Yeah, you did. It's in here, so we'll get to that. I'm talking a lot, but and they had one last week that they had another challenging. Another yeah, I think that I think that it's good that they do that. So that that they showcase that type of stuff. They could become experts in, in a particular uh, treatment that nobody else is doing they, they could they, they could expand their business it's all about helping people expand their business i have nothing to hide myself but anyhow let's get to youtube this is the 18th century victorian chair darcy says hi there i just came upon your video as a true beginner i have been extremely interested in upholstery for years and found your video very informative i was able to receive a chair as my first uh, project for free and I was hoping you could help me identify the style and era. Um, it had springs burst in, so I started from the bottom up. It is said to be over 100 years old, tufted too, and very low, wide, bottom, low to ground. I also found another fabric over the horse hair before muslin. So she's got an interesting, very old project. So anything that's low to the ground like that, you know that it was built for. Um, so that's what I like about upholstery, because it does kind of take you back in history and... and uh, it gets into demographics and sociology, which I had an interest in years ago. Um, I was fascinated by how people lived. Um, but when you look at the average height, this is a 200-year-old chair. She said a 100-year-old chair. But the height difference alone is, is wow. And you know, based on nutrition, I think it's mainly nutritional uh, reasons that we have grown. I mean, I think the average height for a male now is 5'9 or 5'10. Um, it used to be 5'8 in my father's time, but I think it's gone up. But back 100 years ago, I think it was 5'4 for, uh, for a man, Patrick. 5'4. So the chair, and, and for a woman, and I think this was a woman's chair, I, I think it was almost 5'2 or 5 feet even. And then you go back further in time, and it's, it get, the, the heights go down. I, I, I saw a profound... Um, photo on on Facebook once, Patrick, of the um, American uh, basketball team and a North Korean, I think it was, basketball team, and the height differences were amazing. They didn't have anybody over 5'5 five, five or 5'6 five, on their team, but the Americans, see, 
we we have six foot ladies, <laughs> six foot two, right, Patrick? Uh, and and it was an, it was amazing. But I think that's nutrition based. And I I'm sorry if I misspoke or anything, but it's true. It it, it was a picture. It was right there. That it was profound. But I think that um, so that chair. So this is what I like about upholstery. We can talk about history and about what people were like back then. And you know, she's got a chair too. I'll just go on a little bit more about a Victorian era chair. That um, and this we created some controversy, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> and the, it it's created it created controversy. So so I was talking about how the ladies who wore hoop skirts would sit on the these chairs. They would put the hoop over the chair. These hoop skirts were about six feet in diameter, I think. Now somebody will comment about that. He's exaggerating. But, but she would sit on the chair, and, you, and once when she was covered the chair, you didn't even know she was sitting on a chair, Patrick. She said, right? So somebody said in the YouTube video, right, they said, How, what does he know about hoop skirts? He's, oh never, my God. he's never worn a hoop skirt. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about anything. I know, yeah, hoop skirt. <laughs> I think hoop skirts are hilarious, but there was a serious side to hoop skirts, too. And it was during the Civil War. The ladies would hide their, their men who were Confederate soldiers under their hoop skirts, Patrick. So when the Union that seems out there. No, it was real. The hoops when the Union soldiers would come looking for the, they were running after these uh, Confederate soldiers, and they were underneath the hoop skirts. They wouldn't dare look under a lady's skirt. So the they'd have three or four soldiers under there hiding, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> he doesn't believe me, guys. If you guys want to respond to that, where, where you could go right to the comment section, you can Google it. Why don't you do that? You know, I, I've i not been you caught. Add to the comments that would be being said right now if Jimmy was here. <laughs> Forget about it. I wouldn't mention it with Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he's got a vivid imagination, Jimmy. Yeah. So there he goes, goes to show you. Plug one of the Paul, <laughs> <laughs> he would be saying that I was making this up, but I have to say, it, since smartphones, you know, when I'm in class and I say something like this, yeah, you can't get away with that. They story. get on their phones and they look it up, and sure enough, there it is: three unions, three Confederate soldiers were saved by one hoop scribe. <laughs> you know, uh, you guys can look it up. But anyhow, um, so there's no question. There's no question. She's just talking about it, which is fine. So Malcolm. How to run an upholstery shop. Malcolm's on there now, right, Patrick? Yeah. I finally made my own board, and this is the YouTube channel going how to run how to run an upholstery shop where we feature the way what we did. I was talking to my students about this today. Uh, when you think about it, all the balls that you have up in the air, up in the air at one time, and let me read Malcolm's comment because I think it really hits to the heart of, of the board that we featured on that with the post-its. And he says, I finally made my own board. I should have done it much sooner, exclamation point. Extremely useful, even though I see a computer contact and task manager. I use a computer contact and tax, task manager. I don't know what that is. This is visible, visible to me all the time and is a great reminder of what to do next without digging into the time-wasting perturbulator. What is that word he's using? <laughs> computer. Um, this is really interesting, and I love it. And Malcolm, uh, I'm glad I could help you. Uh, I love free advice, and I, 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 I can't tell you what difference this makes in streamlining. I think the biggest thing for me about that board, we have three boards, right, Patrick? We have One, two, yep, three. We have a, a labor board, we have a fabric board, and then we have another board that shows our production. It doesn't have post-its, it's just we have it. Written with Weekly, the uh, with the uh, not with the uh, with the with the, with the markers they use the water markers. Uh, weekly. We do total. a weekly and then total it monthly to see where we're at and you know we're up, you know usually up and down and, and then we go back and say okay what did we do where did the advertising either work or fail and why are we paying this for advertising we could ask or you know wh what was going on when that slow week oh it was a, a school vacation when people were away whatever we we want to be able to you know, be able to kind of correlate uh, things like that. So we have three boards. Malcolm, I think he has a picture of the one board, which I don't have here, Patrick. I thought there was a picture somewhere of his board. Maybe that no, was... there was last week. We last that, week. Yeah. So thank you, Malcolm. Uh, any questions, comments, Patrick, yet, before I go on to the next one, the third one? Um, just... Uh 
a lot of money. Who's? Fr- I'm, I'm honest with a friend of mine has a graphic shop in Florida. I sent him a link to your video so he can make his own. Oh, great. So he's, he's got a different type of a shop. It works for any shop. It, it could work anywhere, any place. It doesn't have to be a... You, you could be making widgets and using that system. It, it's great. So Sarah, uh, she says the upholstery show live. That would be last week, right, Patrick? See, Randy, thanks for joining. He has to run. Who is it? Randy's taking off. Okay, Randy. Keep up the good work. So Sarah says, agreed about the sentimentality of a chair over a sofa. That's what we were talking about. One seat is a lot more sentimental value than, than sofas, right? I think an old sofa breeds resentment, especially when you have many cats. <laughs> There is a big switch, too, I think, in style to smaller accent chairs instead of big sofas taking up space in a room. I live about 40 miles east of Gettysburg. Lots of history. You guys would have a a heyday with the antique stores after antique store here in Lancaster and York County in Pennsylvania. Send Jimmy to do an antique picking. (laughs) Maybe we will. (laughs) That's the end of the YouTube. Like I said, I want to just make another comment about YouTube. I... I kind of, I'm sorry, it's not that we lack content and we're not busy doing videos. We are doing the online videos, Uh, we're doing this show every week, which I don't think makes a lot of, you know, for some reason, Patrick, it's not the same content, right? Mm. It's a little different than showing a a project, right? Yeah. So, does it it count for anything as far as, I I think it might count for something. (laughs) We wouldn't do it otherwise, right? Um, so that's it for the YouTube. So we do, uh, we There's need so to many, do more. Uh, forums. That's What's so that? Not, oh, we have about five. Five. The well, the forum, we have a lot, um, especially, I think, just recently. So the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is we don't always answer the questions on the YouTube, Patrick. Should we be, should we be, is that part of the whole reason why we slowed in the YouTube? Because we're not answering questions well, we on YouTube? we answer them all here. Yeah, but a lot of people don't come. The people who ask you questions on YouTube don't necessarily watch us on the question and the answer. So, no, no, but it gets people to watch. Well, should we make more of an effort on answering on the face on the YouTube? Is what I mean. I think we're doing it good. It's it's hard to do that. Keep up with that. If we do it this way all at once, it's, it is hard. Yeah. All right. Well, Diana, who's part of Esquire Upholstery, right? Yep. She posted this, um, just thought... Which one's more impressive, <coughs> last week or this one? I know. No, this one's definitely more impressive. That one, yeah. <coughs> she says, just thought we would share another mid-century modern project that found its way to the shop. Brown faux leather is, is the before photo. We spent a good solid eight hours fitting, sewing, installing the new black and white fabric. It was sort of like wrestling a gorilla into a pair of skinny <laughs> jeans. Something like that. So let's show this picture. So the before is the ugly brown faux leather, and then she's got a beautiful fab. Is that a fabric or what is that a fabric? Black and white fabric, which is what I'm doing now. I'm, I don't do faux leathers anymore. I'm recommending people do leather. It's fabrics. There's so many different fabrics that you can pick. Really, is that on there? Is that framed nicely, Patrick? I know the the unfortunately the biggest picture is the before. Right, with the ladder. Yeah, right. I wish the other picture was bigger. So that's, that's one. That's ten. Thank you for that. Nico Robinson. She's here. Hi, Nico. She's got, uh, well, this, I'm reading this out of order, but in other news, I sold my upholstered coffee table. Good for you. That's Look cool. At, Might be, that reminded me of Seinfeld. Look at this. <laughs> a coffee table that's an ottoman. That's genius. <laughs> a coffee table with legs. <laughs> a coffee table book about ottoman. A coffee book table. <laughs> but isn't that a nice job? Do you see this, Patrick? Yeah, it's a, really cool. Isn't that nice? I, I, that's a really uh, professionally done photo, too. I'm she she, did she that, sold yeah. it. Yeah. Congratulations. And she did post something before that. Well, let's let's go to Nico first. Hope it doesn't mess you up at all, Patrick. No, I don't have the. You do have a word. So in her first, in her first uh, posting on Facebook, you guys, if you're watching this for the first time, definitely Facebook forum. We encourage people to go to that. It's a self-help. Um, a lot of it's self-help. Would you call it self-help? Uh, a lot of sign-ups in the last week. And There's people, a lot of people join it. So many people helping one another that that's what I like on there. 
Um, sometimes I can't get to it right away. Some people have already answered the questions. But she says, hi, folks. Uh, been MIA for a few weeks. I had a couple of furniture flips in the queue. I'm back to upholstery. Yay. She must like upholstery. And I'm stuck on the pillow top ottoman. We're using the zippered piece cause it's re already done and I think it reattaches it to the base incorrectly. Going to remeasure the original piece. It seems to have been done by machine. And try again. Don't really have a question. Just need moral support. Well, you know, I do have a comment. So she, so that she's talking about the cushion, the bottom of the cushion that's not seen, that you need an opening. So in this case, the opening is a zipper. I, I make my, you know, this is funny. I make it like a regular cushion, and then I cut the, the fabric at a at an angle from uh, not straight across, but from corner to corner. I cut it at an angle, not all the way, obviously. And then I fill the cushion, and then I just hand stitch it closed. Nothing fancy. It's a blanket stitch closed. It's a lot easier than struggling with the zipper. That's that's a manufacturer's trick, and that takes longer for a custom upholsterer to do, in my opinion. Um, so that's how I do it. And the other thing I want to encourage um, Nico, I want to say, I hate semi-attached cushions. That's what she's doing—a semi-attached cushion. The reason I hate them is because they never square up right. So oftentimes on a semi-attached, depending on the fabric, um, I find that the corners don't line up or they're not tight enough for me. So I, I sometimes add, I flip up the, uh, I flip up the seat portion of the of the ottoman, and I, I attach twines like about a yard each each light length I, I, with a curved needle, and then I run it through to the bottom to get the corners tight or to get them a little bit more square. She so doesn't have enough of the purple fabric. Oh, that's too bad. But, you know, we, we get we get challenged sometimes, but I can tell you that it's not even for a professional. They don't always come out great, those, those uh, or squ as squared as we would like them. So I hope that helped. Um, Brad says, question, what is the right size of tacks for tying eight-way springs? So when you're tying eight-way springs, I use a 14-ounce tack with prongs. Make sure that they're the pointed tack. I've been getting, I got some tacks I'm not happy with in my supply. You didn't tell me he was changing them, but I want to show you. I'm not sure what I have here. I might have. Be patient with me for one minute because I think this is important. Um, I hope I have. No, oh, these are 12-ounce. Oh, here they are. These are the good tacks, you guys. This is the only tack for tying, because you have to loop your, your ruby twine around. These would be halfway in, at least, maybe two-thirds of the way in, and you, you dress them up with your ruby twine, and then you, you, you anchor them in. Those prongs are so important, because there's a lot of tension, upward tension on that with your springs, right? And the prongs really keep the tack in. I got a couple. I got a box. I'm gonna have to complain to my guy. Tell him I don't. I want these ones. See the point on them. The cut. It's all about the cut when you're talking about upholstery tacks. The cut has to be pr right, and that's the right cut. The other ones I got uh, did. They they didn't have the the, the prongs. They were um, too fat at the end. I didn't like them at all. They, they they really have a hard time driving. Even I have a hard time driving them through wood, which which is not good. These go right in, even hardwood. So, you know, watch your supply. Sometimes they, sometimes they uh, kind of throw you for a loop. One time, I remember this, this was really bad. My supplier switched staple companies, and uh, if, you, if you look at this, you can't really see um, the glue that's holding these individual staples. It's like a light glue that they use to hold the staples. So, unfortunately, on this manufacturer was using this glue as either an inferior glue or too much glue. And it actually jammed, would jam your gun, even the good gun. So, so it was really bad. So we had to return all those staples. You have to really pay attention to your supply and your supplier. Sometimes they, they you know, they like to save money too sometimes. <laughs> it's usually as a result, the results aren't good when they want to save money. So that, so that's the question, that answers that. Now we have a long one. Mary Kay has, has really been prolific as of late, and she's local, so she came into the shop. I helped her with, I'm not sure, Patrick, you didn't have time to do that other one, 
as well? Oh, the one we featured last week um, for Mary Kay was was a she was having a hard time with the corners on that. Right, right she came in. Post. She we're, came we're, in. We were there, yeah. And were you that you weren't there when she came in? Were you? Was it at those? Uh, they're black and white. Yeah, you came yeah, in. Yeah, she was there, yeah. So we came and we helped her out and reassured her that uh, she was doing a good job. Um, but she has she has a really interesting project here. I'm sit down to read it. She says, I have another few questions. Background. I'm working on a wooden rocking chair, probably about 100 years old. This wasn't from last week, right, Patrick? No, this is, I think, This is fresh. Yeah. This is three days ago. Not a staple to be found. It's had at least one recovery where the second upholsterer did not remove everything, but instead added more cotton and horsehair over the seat and back before the new fabric. I took off the last fabric on the back, but left the tufted leather and covered it with more cotton. I like the idea that she that she kept the leather on the back. The seat, however, was not comfortable due to the bar in front that supported the one-time leather. Um, so I took everything off. Um, the springs were tall and under so much tension that they splintered the wood sides. I repaired the wood cracks with epoxy, and I'm using mostly staples. I chose short. Is she is she on here, Patrick? By the time I haven't seen her now. I chose I chose shorter springs so they would not require so much tension. Good idea. So the first question is, when I'm working on a rocking chair, do you have the extra height in front of compared with the regular chair? I would keep it. I would keep it. Just think of it as a regular chair. Um, don't 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 overthink this. Don't think that you have to put more. Just think of it just evenly. To put it on evenly. How do you measure the seat how seat height? Um, set it level. The springs came out with graduated with tallest in front, which is really uh, not necessary. Um, there was a lot of horsehair that I can reuse, about two inches thick, but the chair owner would like me to add in some foam cushioning to make it comfortable, to make it a comfortable reading chair. Do I skip the horsehair, save it for another project, and just put in foam? Do I angle the foam for the rocker? And thanks for your suggestion. That's our question. Now, this is really important. Because you really do need to, as they say, take the curse off the metal edgings of the springs. So, so if you're not using real horsehair, you have to use a synthetic horsehair. You have to go with the rubberized horsehair. Something has to, the, the first foundation, well, you can, go, you can go with the burlap over the springs. But the first batting, either you would go with the regular horse hair, which doesn't do as good a job in, in, re, in regards to taking the curves off, off the edge of the springs as the rubberized horse hair does, although it will last longer. <laughs> regular horse hair will last longer. And believe it or not, you guys, you might as well know this now, the rubberized horse hair only has a certain shelf life, I would say about 25 years. Mary Kay is in the chair. Hi, Mary Kay. We're talking about your chair. So it was a good idea for her to go to um, the New Springs. <coughs> um, I think it was a good idea. And then she's going to go with the burlap. She's going to hand tie the springs eight way, go with the burlap. And the rubberized horse hair, if they don't want the horse hair, um, to reuse the horse hair. And you could even, it's too bad. Did she say they don't want the horse hair? Is that what they said, Patrick? That they don't want the horse hair? No, they don't say don't use the horse hair. So what I would do, uh, Mary, is maybe take a layer of horse hair over the rubberized horse hair and then go to either a one or a two inch. One inch foam would work better than a two inch foam. And, and then cotton over that. Um, so any combination, though, should bring, in regards to the seat height, you want to go on a rocking chair. It's still the same seat height. When the rocking chair is in the uh, upright position, not the reclined position, put it in an upright position and measure from the floor up. 17 inches should do it. Even at the crown, if it's 17 inches, it's fine. Um, and, and that's it. I mean, you should look at it as a regular chair. I like what you did on the back to keep to keep the original horse hats, kind of like a historical thing, and then fill in with cotton like they did, on, the second upholsterer did. And, and I think you're good to go. And as usual, you can stop in and pop in at the shop anytime you want because we'll be happy to see you and give you more advice. But I think you're doing a good job, um, so keep it up. Any questions or comments, Patrick? Well, she says I can put that in the horse hair, but I need more cushion. Yeah, that the foam would, would fill that, would do that for sure. 
the foam and cotton. And if you're not sure, here's a little tip. Let's say you get it, get it all, all that stuff in there. You can go to muslin and put muslin on. The nice thing about muslin is it, it it's, um, and you get it on there, is that you can add more over the muslin, or you can just put the fabric over the muslin, or you can add two layers of cotton over the muslin. So you got you got some room there, some wiggle room, instead of committing to the fabric right away. So it's useful for beginners. Uh, muslin is useful for beginners in this regard. So we, I knew a teacher that would that that would insist that everybody do mus everything up in muslin, which is like upholstering twice really. But for beginners, it might be especially for seats where there's a lot of spring action. It might be a good idea to do muslin, and then you're not committed. And then you can even you know you do it up to muslin. You can even sit in it, Mary Kay. Sit in the chair after you've done it to see if you like it. And you can make adjustments from there. It's easier. You can even pin tack the muslin on. Pin tack tightly the muslin on. Sit in the chair to make sure that it's comfortable and you know springs aren't popping through or whatever. And if you need to make some adjustments to springs, or you can go from the bottom and do that, by the way, sometimes, after you've done the work. Or you can add on. It, 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 it's there. Does that make sense? So since it's going from a square seat to a crown seat, does it need to, does it need the jute roll around the seat or just the front? Uh, I would put, um, the answer to that might be um, all the way around for sure, but you could go to a smaller roll on the sides and, and maybe like uh, a bigger roll in the front, but not the biggest roll. You can go to on the front, you could, you could put like a one, one, in, one and a half inch, I think it's the medium roll. You want a medium roll and then a small roll around the sides and the back, because small rolls are a lot easier to attach, especially under the back. And you could do your work with the stable gun from the from the outsides too on that. So you know, and again, you know, your your the thing I like about upholstery, Mary Kay, is that you can explore. Uh, this is a chair where you really can explore uh, battings. Um, and once you get the, you know, you get some good questions for the basics. But once you do that, you could kind of on this particular chair. This could be a real learning chair for you for future work. But you can you can you can you can explore with with what I said about the muslin, and the different. You can go to a. Um, so I'm recommending. Um, this is how I want it. You, you got your springs anchored. You got your your eight way tie. You got your burlap. Then you got your edge rolls, like I discussed. Then you've got your rubberized horse hair, which which has to sit inside of the edge roll, not over the edge roll. Don't do it over the edge roll. Remember, the rubberized horse hair is a batting. It's contributing to the overall height, but it's the main reason you're doing it is to take the curse off those springs. And you want to attach it on the inside. Not, and this is another thing that's important. You want to try to keep... You, you see these online classes, you guys. I'm, I'm forever telling Jimmy and pointing out uh, transition lines and how crisp you should keep the transition lines almost until the end. So if you take the rubberized horse hair and you go over the... Uh, edge roll and, and attach it to the little wood that you have in the front that is really going to mess out the look so we're challenged this is challenging you know for upholsters to make sure yeah I want to be comfortable I want it to look good too you know that's that's the part that's a little tricky but the online classes again if you're watching this for the first time and you and I'm going on and on and on I'm verbalizing a lot without actually having something in front of me. So the online classes are for you. Somebody commented, I don't know where, somebody on the Facebook, Patrick, commented to somebody. You don't have all the comments on the Facebook here, Patrick, because I saw some more. Well, I, then people comment on the post. Uh, they, they comment they, on the post. Remember. Somebody said you got it. Somebody was commenting about a settee they were doing, and somebody said, well, I don't know, maybe it was Mary Kay or somebody said, you got to get the settee class. It's the best investment. Who was that? might have been Janine. Might have been. It's the That's best. Definitely the most popular class we've done. It's a, it's it's a worth the invest. How much is that class, Patrick? I think it's a little more. It's sixty bucks. Sixty dollars. Uh, Somebody said it's the best investment you can make, and I think now talk about a little bit about these packages that you have on the online classes, Patrick. What are the packages? Well, that of course, you there's the Jimmy package. The Jimmy, you get all of Jimmy's classes. <laughs> you, if anybody can tolerate that, <laughs> it's available. That's a, it's no, just, no, it's a, it really. So it's just the Jimmy. I didn't know that. How much is that? Um, that one I think is 
So he, he's done most of the classes. I think it's over 100. 100 bucks? Over that. I think it's... Big, I'll edit the check. Well, whatever no it is. No one's bought it. <laughs> Nobody's... <laughs> No one's bought it. Oh, come on. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> he gets, so that means his commission is zero, zero, zero. <laughs> well, Mary. Well, yeah, but they bought them individually. So. Oh, okay. But, Jimmy uh, is very. No, the, there's the, uh, you can get a package of the new stuff and the old stuff. And that's the one that we always recommend to go with. If we're gonna... But what is the most somebody can spend on that? It's not much. I don't know. Not about the money, right? It's not. No, <laughs> it really isn't. I mean, we don't do it. For, we don't make a ton of money on this, but I think it's a great public service. And when I hear from people, please respond and t tell us how things have, you know, how we have helped you. I know that uh, Blair has been good. Blair's gotten busy. I noticed that he doesn't post anymore, but that's good because I know he's busy. He, I see his Facebook postings. He's he's on his own now. He's really doing well. But I did want to make a comment about other things that we have off to on the upholstery. We very rarely uh, uh, talk about the upholstery on Broadway website, Patrick, where people can get supplies, uh, where people, you know, it's a way of supporting us and what we do. They can get, uh, Mary Kay purchased a kit on there that she did that I have to, I have to say, she did a great job. And when she took my, she took it in, she took a class, Patrick. When she took a class, she, she her knowledge was so much greater than other people who didn't have that kit. It's a kit. It's a it's a fully upholstered A to Z kit, right, Patrick? Yep. Uh, that people can buy. I think that's the most expensive thing we have online. Uh, but she did, and I think she was happy with that. And I think that propelled her to do other things. So we we appreciate um, people buying things through our website. We we don't have fabric through our website. Um, although maybe one day we should, but it's a little tricky. A fabric's tricky because um, it goes out of stock so often, right, Patrick? It could be a nightmare with back orders and things like that. So we don't we don't get to that yet, unless we have our own line of fabrics. We, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Are there any questions or comments, Patrick? Um, no, nope, not right now. Mary Kay says thank you. You're welcome, Mary and, Kay. Um, yeah, Pretty much caught up. I think we're caught up, and I think that how how long have we been going for, Patrick? You've been going for close to an hour. Are you gonna um, do some estimates? Or? Yeah, okay. I think we're gonna Michaela jump in and do some estimates. Um, uh, we haven't gotten many estimates, so that's all right. They'll come. And we had somebody just now wanting to be on Facebook, Patrick. Yeah, I just them. addressed that. Good, Mike. Um, yeah. We don't know where people are from. It would be interesting. I would be interested in knowing where people are from who are, who are joining up on Facebook, but well, all over, I'm sure. It's all over the world or all over this country. The world. The world. We have people. Somebody that, here earlier that was checking in from Germany, I think. So we have people in Germany, Belgium, uh, Australia, uh, Canada, Ireland. Uh, what are some of the other countries that you're off the top of your head, Patrick, that you could think of? Did you say Australia? I said Australia. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. I'll look at the um, chats on it. It seems like islands. People Mike's from New Orleans. I've oh, been that's there. I love good. it there. Yeah. You like it down there, yeah, Patrick? That's cool. Um, so, yeah, thank you for joining up. Um, so, Michaela, what do you got for me? Well, there's just one. Oh, it's boy. That one. First, it's that first one, that first email. You want to read that? It's a good time. We're very busy, guys. And One says, submission. <laughs> Cushion needed for chair in attached photo. I have two identical chairs, so I'd need two cushions. I'd like them in some kind of tapestry-looking material, like it has now, with a velvet backing, as seen. I'd like the current one recreated to the to the extent possible. The cushion measures approximately 22 and a half by 19 and a half. The back of it narrows quite d uh, down quite a bit. I tried to take photos that would show you that. And it's not a big job, but sometimes these big jobs lead to other jobs. So um, it's pretty much a, a cane seat. So we'd charge her 150 for the labor. And um, sounds like they need padding too, right? Probably. So we'll sort of just say 175 for labor and and, and cushioning because it's a small it's a small cushion. Plus one and a half yards each. 
Like that? Two fumbles that one. One and a half yards each. Okay? And that's it. Um, I did have some submissions uh, that sometimes Patrick and Michaela aren't privy to. They, they come in on a text message. So I just want to talk about uh, some of that. Um, actually, related to customer service, a lot of this is, you know, back and forth about when we could pick up um, the furniture and all that stuff. So that's good. But let me just give you an example of some estimates. Um, actually, I, had a, I did a bench for somebody and I, this, this might be interesting and a little cautionary tale here. Um, they took the bench off themselves and then um, reattached it and I made holes in where the hinges went. I think this is not a piano bench, it was more of a storage bench. And do you see that, that picture, Patrick, can you see that? There's a little uh, pucker uh, oh, up at the top. Do you see that up at the top? There's like a little pole. Oh, big pole. You see that? Yeah, it's coming through. So, so they, they took the bench, they took it home, and they, they put the screw in. One of the screws pinched the fabric and did that. It's amazing. And I saw it. So they wanted to know what to do. I said, back off the screw and reset the screw. But beyond that, they might, they might need new screws. Sometimes the old screws, are, they have snags on them themselves, or burrs, as they say. And the burr can do that to a fabric. It's kind of, you know, not a good thing. So I didn't hear back, so I assume that everything's okay. So these are some of the things I get as texting. What? You said 175 total? Yeah, total. Okay. Plus a, a, a yard and a half each one. So let me just see if I have any other uh, text messages. Uh, with estimates, I mean. So the other thing I'm not doing anymore, you know, I get an inquiry. Um, you know, people just wanting to do repair jobs. And, and I just, I've stopped doing repair jobs. You know, this was a glider rocker. You, you don't need to see this. It was a glider rocker that was caving in on the bottom. And those glider rockers, they do not do the same upholstery that we do. They, they use a stretch piece of plastic. And so I'm gonna get something that's inherently a problem. You gotta be careful of this stuff. You gotta be careful of recliners section, uh, sofa beds, recliners, and these glider rockers and other pieces of furniture that are newer, that are not put together like uh, with jute webbing, for instance, on the bottom. So. And, and oftentimes a jute webbing can't fit onto a frame that, that, that won't take the pressure of, a, of jute webbing when you stretch it. So you have to be real careful. Sometimes it's just not worth, they're just not worth doing. So, you know, I, I tell her I don't do repairs. So I give her a price on the, on the recline of like 675 on the text. And then they came back right away and says, why is it so expensive? <laughs> well, you know, these are glider rockers that are produced 10,000 at a time, the way they're produced. That's why it's broken, you know, so, you know, but to, to, I would reupholster it for her and I would improve on it. I would make a better product, but, you know, this, you know, some people are so set with these, the price, the new furniture industry has really uh, killed us in some ways with the, with the price points. And beyond that, you know, when you go in, for people who are at that price, Point level, um, they're offered uh, refinance. They're offered financing on furniture, which don't ever do that, you guys. If you can help it, you're better off with used furniture. This is an interesting one from Nico here because yeah. I was telling you about something like this uh, uh, that somebody did. Uh, she says I got a request for 12 weight room benches oh. at the local high school. <laughs> Haven't gotten the measurements, but what would be a good estimate? Well, usually they're upholstered, right? They're not. Right, guys? They, they in more gyms than I am. Michaela's but shaking her head. Uh, it's faux leather. Uh, Obviously, it's not real. Vinyl. Vinyl. Be no, very, it's always vinyl. Actually. Be very careful with the faux leather that you put on this, with the sweat I don't and think everything. they put faux leather. I think it's Michaela's yeah, right. It's, it's vinyl. Too, that's, yeah. Faux leather is too expensive, even, or too fancy for them. It's probably all vinyl. Yeah, but, you know, you got to be Depends careful. Kind of you got to make sure that it's a high-performance vinyl, because with the use that it's going to get with the wet, and yeah. people wipe it down and everything... You don't want to do all these and then get a call back 
Uh, but you know, this is this is not a hard job. It's not hard. Uh, but I'll tell you what is hard, going to the gym, taking it apart, probably leaving the frame there, um, working around their schedule, around the people who are going to be working other equipment while you're there, and then they want it yesterday. So those things you need to add pricing on. It's not just if they brought you the 10 to your shop, they, they took them off themselves. You should offer that too, by the way. If, 12. Well, how many are there? 12. You, you take the 12, you bring them to me, this is how much it's going to cost. If I have to do it, this is how much it's going to cost. And I can tell you right now, you better double the cost of the labor. She's in New York, so... Double it. Yeah. Double it. And I'm going to tell you something. I, tell you, I don't know if I've had very good luck with pricing on uh, these type of jobs. It's, well, it's not a commercial, it's just a local high school. Yeah, but then you're going to get into, you know, payment, you know, 30, 60 days or whatever it's going to be. And you're probably going to be bidding against other people. And they're probably going to want it, you to do all the servicing. You guys can tell he loves commercial work, doesn't he? Well, there's so many, there's so many of these, you know. So I, I'm, I'm trying to push you to do more of it. It's so clear cut with our regular customers. They come in with the project. This is how much it's going to be. This is how long it's going to take. This is what, you know, you, they pick fabric out and that's it. And in these jobs, you know, there's a bidding process. I'll tell you a, pro I'll tell you a reason why. I had a, I, I'll tell you a story. Well, do you want to finish that first? I well, the, you, uh, yeah. Good estimate? So the good estimate for that, she tell, does she say how big they are? Well, I could probably tell you, how, what are they, are three feet long? You know, By inches? 20 inches wide? Not even a foot. Sometimes they're about a foot wide. Yeah, about a foot. Yeah. Foot wide. So she has to take the old off. She has to upholster it. And I don't, she didn't say if they want a new foam. Usually they don't, they don't require new foam. But the labor on those should be about 150 each at least. 150 each. Leslie had a good comment here. Marine vinyl. Yeah, marine vinyl. That's a good. That's good advice. For is it Nico that's asking uh, this? Leslie commented. Leslie, that. yeah. Make sure you get something like that. And I assume there's no stitching on this or anything. So it's an easy job. Logist. It's an easy job from an upholstery standpoint. Logistically, it doesn't sound like it's an easy job. And billing and all that. It sounds like it's uh, it's got other it's got other caveats. So be careful and price it out accordingly. So I'll tell you a job. I I, I got a nightmare is usually this job. I got a call from the Coast Guard. Um, we we're along the coast here in Massachusetts, and so it was during COVID too, the height of COVID. And I I, I went into this vessel. This old. It looked like. It was from World War II, Patrick. <laughs> hey, tell me about that. This vessel uh, that they had for the Coast Guard, it was one of the ocean-going uh, vessels. It wasn't a cutter. So they have they have different ships for diff and boats. They would never call it a boat, though. Ships for different tasks. Uh, the local would be the cutters, and the the uh, uh, the more of the um, ocean-going would be the bigger bigger boats, which this was. It was a big boat. But it was one, of, don't be, I found out one thing, don't be a, a tall person on a, on, a, on a Navy ship or Coast Guard ship. But anyhow, um, they wanted the officer's quarters, uh, you know, the lounge to be done. And I went in there and I, you wouldn't believe getting into this place, getting down into the ship. Oh man, I was going through all these bulkheads and everything. I didn't even know where I was. I got to the bottom, gave them an estimate, uh, went back. Um, logistically, it would have been a nightmare getting the stuff out of there, but they were going to help me. Um, got back, and that, that that was just the beginning of the problems. And they started doing this. Uh, they got other estimates, and and they started to play my estimate against the other two estimates. And I know that they were doing that. I mean, the the quartermaster was doing the best he could to, to save money for the for the coast guard, and his he had somebody that he had to answer to. I just said, the heck with that. I didn't have any time to be, I already gave a price and that was it. So I don't come down on my price once I give it because a lot of thought process, I mean, so that's like three, four hours work. And that's what you can expect commercial jobs, uh, three, four hours each one. And you don't always get it. And sometimes when you're doing work for a school uh, or public, any public entity, they have to get other bids. So you're bidding against each other and I don't like the idea of that anyhow but anyhow that's life and that's biz that type of business so good luck on that one are there any more comments Patrick uh, no, I think we're good all right I think so I think we're done I think that thanks you guys this has been an engaging the last couple of uh, questions the answers have been very interesting oh Jimmy has <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> 
Uh, no, Jimmy's great, but he kind of just <laughs> he kind of can get distract me, you know. I mean, the the best one was when the when he thought his fans were at the door. Remember, Patrick? Oh my God! When the other location he we got had, all happy. he got all happy. My fan, I got yeah, a fan. My blush. fans want to get in, <laughs> and it turned out it was a dog. <laughs> Why are you gonna steal it? <laughs> Poor oh Jimmy. God. If you have any comments or questions or or good things to say about Jimmy, feel free to contact us. We'll try to get him back we'll, next week. We'll see where he's at. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, you guys, and see you next time. Thanks, guys.